so I can have it in backlog too. Okay. Uh, I guess let's just uh, let's just run over Elephant and Mango from Summit Nine. Cool. Okay. Alrighty, and shiggity share screen. So anytime I do analysis, I always do it in half speed. Um, the reason why we want to do this is because it just makes it a lot easier to understand what both players are going for and the decision making between both players. So, <clears throat> like, if we analyze closely enough, we can even see, like, really, really obvious mistakes. So, that's mm -hmm. also really, really, really helpful. I think this is hand warmer. So pretty much the goal for Fox is to land either a grab or get a knockdown. And the goal for Falco is pretty much to like shut Fox down and Fuck, get shines. On. Okay. Jess, I didn't realize the I thought this the viewer cam the side cams were gonna be on the side and they're definitely not. Mm. So hang on. Sorry. Gotcha. <laughs> no, you're fine. Just over a little bit. Um, and then move this bit, and we are Gucci, I think. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Um, yeah, so, like, a lot of what Falco wants to do is cut Fox off trying to move around him, and also, if he can, set up pressure situations. Like, <clears throat> anytime either character can, they want to go for, like, winning positions, but getting to the winning positions can be kind of difficult. That's more of neutral, but... That's also how a lot of the combo game opens up, is they do save things until they're able to hit confirm something. So understanding that Fox wants to either full hop and move around Falco and prevent him from shooting lasers while also getting knockdowns with either Shine or also landing grabs is like pretty much Fox's like goal here. Um, his up tilt's also like a really, really insanely good anti-air against Falco and vice versa. Falco's, Fox and Falco up tilt are both like their up tilt and back are just actually broken. It's so, so good. So does Fox's um, up tilt prioritize over like some of Falco's like approaching moves, or? Um, it depends. So, <clears throat> um, the reason why this matchup is kind of weird sometimes is because Fox's vertical movement, like Fox, can just full hop over stuff and then attack Falco. So Falco has to play pretty patient if the Fox is good like that. Mm -hmm. And they have to not commit to lasers as much in, in neutral. They have to be more cautious of lasers, I guess I should say. Because if if Fox is like, let's just say, for example, if Fox is right where he is right now, and there's a Falco here, right? Mm -hmm. And they try just like lasering in place to catch them, just, you know, dropping through it. If they just run off and shine them, then Falco's off stage. So... Falco has to be insanely careful about the overall positioning of where his opponent is and when he shoots lasers, and also he needs to be able to corner Fox really well and then punish him for trying to get around him. It's insanely important. This is a little different. I want to talk about this pressure situation right quick. So he gets um, Mango lands a dare, and it looks like it was either... I think either Mango drifted back. No, he drifted in. So he drifted in and hit him after the up tilt. And then that is some, it's probably SDI. <clears throat> so then Shine, and on on pressure situations is what I want to talk about real fast. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's a lot of like, there's a lot of misunderstanding about, about pressure game. So Fox and Falco have Shine Grab. There are very, very, very few characters that can deal with that, like, aggressively. There's pretty much only five characters that can ever deal with Shine Grab. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, I believe, Bowser, Samus. I know Bowser's kind of a weird one, but <laughs> Bowser, Samus. Um, Bowser, Samus, Sheik, Fox, Falco. I'm pretty sure Sheik, yeah. I'm like almost 100% sure Sheik. Sheik should be able to um, short hop Nair out of shield. Short hop Nair is uh, frame three, and she's got, what, three frame jump squad, so that's six frames. So, yeah, I think that's correct. So any of those five characters can deal with shine grab. If it's not one of those five characters, if the if the space animal just does an aerial high enough, or like does the aerial well enough to just avoid grab, they get a really strong mix up. They either get shine grab and they get a free grab, right? Or they aerial shine and then they wave dash back. And if they wave dash back and the person, let's say in this situation, we can see Falco shining on shield right here. If so Falco shine grabs Fox, right? And the reason why, even though Shine Out of Shield can beat um, Shine Grab, 
it's pretty difficult to do like really consistently mm -hmm. and especially in like the heat of a match so this kind of pressure is actually going to stay really relevant for quite a while with like uh falco so anyway um so the other part of the mix of shine grab and when they start uh panicking and not wanting to deal with that they're either going to start like buffer rolling away or buffer rolling into you right let's say it's a character that isn't like one of the five that i just mentioned so if um if Falco does shine and wave dash back here and Fal and Fox rolls into him, then Falco just gets a free punish. Even if, like, Fox waits and doesn't do anything, Falco's right back at the position that he wants to be at. So he can just, like, jump back and shoot another laser, right? And that's still a winning position for Falco. If Falco's, like, right here and then Fox is, like, right here, this is a really good winning position. But anyway, I'm getting a little bit too into semantics. But, um... Yeah, the pressure usually just has to be split between, like, two different things, and that's, like, shine grab, wave dash back, or shine wave dash back, and then you can also, like, you can also supplement it for different things, too. You can intentionally do, like, a really, really late aerial into jab, so you don't stick yourself into shine, and you can punish the rolls or spot dodge that the opponent does. Mm -hmm. So, so if, Leffen's, <clears throat> so if Leffen could just consistently try and... Uh... Fuck, uh, Shine Out of Shield, the manga would have been in trouble. Right, if he got in Shine Out of Shield, but, but it was really difficult because of how the situation was all set up, too. So, like, Leffen full hops over Mango, and then he tries throwing out, like, a protective up tilt, but Mango waits, right? And then he, he jumps. If, if I think Leffen might have accidentally turned around here. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think Leffen might have accidentally turned around here, but anyway, that's not important. So, like, this whole situation is kind of scuffed just because of, like, this interaction right here. And then from there, it, it, it things change, right? Because Levin is trying to shield just to not get comboed. He's not shielding to try and punish shield pressure. He just thinks that um, he has the potential for getting, like, hit again, and he doesn't want to. So he's not even worried about Shine Out of Shield right now, probably. Mm -hmm. So that's, like, probably one of the reasons why that Shine Grab connected but <clears throat> okay this is kind of what i was talking about earlier yeah falco has to falco has to play a little bit slower whenever uh fox has top flat he has to be a little careful is that common that fo uh fox will camp like top platforms against falco um it's a really strong position for fox so i think it's pretty important to learn but I don't think most of the average level players are doing it. I think it's more or less like the top players, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, now. Yeah, and again, that's, you know. So so top platform specifically is a little bit more powerful um, just because he can come down with drill or the fact that he can just come down and, like, shine, like, a certain pos like position himself better from the top platform? Or what is, what is the... So, like, yeah, so, like, what I was talking about before, right? Like... Falco, Falco from this position is kind of in, he's in a really awkward position. So he can full hop, double jump, laser, laser, and then land on the side platform. And that's probably his best bet, or that's one of his better options. Mm -hmm. Or he could like, you know, short hop, double jump, laser, laser, and then land back on stage. But um, with, with Fox like this, it's usually better to get like diagonal and below him. So like right here. Mm hmm and then you can start threatening with, like, your back needs to be towards, or Falco's back should be towards Fox here, so that he can threaten with up tilts if Fox tries to drop through. Because if he tries to drop through and hit Falco, if Falco times the up tilt well enough, then it's just kind of not going to matter. Like, up tilt's just going to beat out whatever he does, so. So. Um, and at, at, like, the worst, it would trade maybe with the first few hits of drill, and then it would just go back to him. So. So it's literally just from positioning, though. It's not like so. Like I know you said Falco's in a bad spot, but like if you said right. if he's in a, if he's in a better position underneath Fox, does Fox even have like that much of a big advantage, or is it just Falco's in a bad like in a worse place? Um, not necessarily. I mean, like the reason why top platform is good is because Falco has to move high to get there and like punish Fox for being off. Oh, and so Fox he has to like commit off so fast and attack him like. The, the reason why it's so good is Falco has to commit to something first, usually. Like, right, I got it, I got if, it, I got it. Yeah, if Falco doesn't want to, like, stay in weird positions like this, he has to commit to going up. Now, there is something to be said for, like, punishing Fox before he gets into this position. However, that brings its own, like, risks. So, 
if like that's a call out right so like mango moves back and throws laser out here right and he has to respect like he's he's <clears throat> he has to respect Leffen's um, approach game still. So, like, he shoots laser, and then he dashes forward. He sees that Leffen is still full hopping in, so he chooses to dash back, right, because he doesn't want to, like, try and challenge it. If he short hops forward and Leffen just throws out an error drill, then Falco would have lost in that position. So he wanted to move back a little bit more and, and uh, create a little bit more distance so he could just start reacting to him again. And Leffen used that dash full hop forward to spook him into going into the corner, and then he just gets the top platform. It's like Falco is kind of forced to respect that there. I see. So, like, he he definitely could have read it, right? He And that's, like, pretty important later on. So, like, if he had dashed forward here and then maybe done, like, a short dash back and then just waited, he could have... He probably could have, like, dashed full hopped and then maybe got... Yeah, he's pretty far away from here. I think he probably wouldn't have been able to punish. So you going to have caught him, like, a back air or anything? Uh, no. I don't think so. Like, yeah, that's just... That was... I mean, Mango was respecting respecting his aggression so much that, like, he just didn't want to fuck with it at all. And Le Levin... Instead of playing, like, kind of a risk... Because... Leffen could have gone in there, probably, and he could have landed on stage. But if he had landed, like, that would have been in a really, really good position for Falco. And he doesn't want to do that, right? So, like, he wants to try and avoid that position. And one of the better ways to avoid that and also force people out of stage is that dash and full hop. But he got um, top platform just by double jumping to it. Anyway, I'm, like, covering this way more in depth than I should be. But So, you just, so as Fox, you just don't want to be, like like a character's worth away from from uh fuck sorry it's fox you don't want to be like just in front of falco well i mean it depends it it like being there on your own terms is fine and but being there being in those kind of positions they have the um when they have the positional advantage because you can both two people can be in similar positions and they can be completely different for both people it just depends um it depends on a few different things. So let's see. Actually, yeah. So there's the full hop that I was talking about. I think, um, yeah, Mango might have, mm, no, nah, I think Leffen just called the laser out really well here. So this happens. Yeah, and then he just full hop drills. Okay, yeah, that was good on his part. Okay. All right, so that was really good on both players, actually. So, Leffen up smashes into up tilt, right? Yeah. I'm gonna play, play this like frame by frame. So he goes into up tilt. He doesn't want him to like immediately fall in tech. Or he, yeah, he doesn't want him to immediately fall and get like a really, really easy tech. So what he does is he does dash attack to make him mess up the tech timing. But Mega holds on, I think he either holds on to it or he teched really late and still got, no, nah, I don't think there's any way he could have teched late. He held on to his tech for sure here. Because he, okay. he knew he'd probably cover it with the, uh, was that a dash tech he did, I think? Wasn't it? Right, right. Yeah. Okay. And there's the variance of what we talked about last time. So he gets the knockdown on the platform here. Yeah. He dashes in to cover the tech in place, right? And to get ready for... Or, I'm sorry. He dashes away to call the rolls. So he's he's forfeiting the punish for the tech in place and miss tech to try and punish the rolls. He expects Bango to roll here. And so he dashes this direction. And if he rolls this direction, then all Leffen has to do is dash right here and then full hop back air him. And then he goes off. Mm -hmm. Now, if he tech rolls this direction, like then dashes towards him to set that up, and then dashes away and then pull hop back airs. I see. Yeah. yeah. And he goes for the down smash. Okay. Yeah. Using using platforms is a really, really common um, tool of, like, getting out of corner pressure in corner situations is, like... Some of the faster characters, they'll they'll like moving up to platforms to start baiting people, because they can they can either like run that position that the shield right here. He could have 
full hopped and wave landed on like he did, or he could have full hopped onto the, like, like it looked like he was going to go onto the platform and then drop through. He could dash full hop and then double jump to top platform. Like, there's, there's a lot of different stuff that Fox can do. Fox's full hop is actually crazy good. It's just so insanely good. Okay. Also, do you have any questions or anything about what we've covered? Just in general? Um, I do have questions, but I think it's for another time. <laughs> okay. Just because we're covering sure. Punish today. Like, I don't really understand the concept of, um, like, you know, when we were talking about the situational thing about whether it would be in, uh, like, Falco or Fox's favor or whatever. But I think that's more of a neutral thing. So I'll just, like, keep right. focus on the Punish for now. Okay, yeah. And we'll go over okay. that at a different time. Okay. Um, so it, so I noticed this is like a lot of um like you know baked in Falco to go up to the the platform and stuff and get him to commit. Is there like not really like a set guaranteed punish game on like either character? Because I noticed it's just like chip damage. Um, I mean, like, well, that's what's gonna happen a lot in neutral. So, like, they either go for like a clean hit or a stray hit. That's how I define like hits in neutral. Like a stray hit really doesn't lead to anything other than some kind of positional advantage, right? And yeah. then it just resets. Like it doesn't true reset to neutral, but it, it resets to where one of those people has positional advantage. Yeah. And then clean clean hit is where they just get like a hard punish in an opening. It is incredibly difficult to get a clean hit on good players. So that's why you're seeing a lot of them take like really like the stray hits, the like bitch hits and stuff like that. I see. Is, is because it's actually quite difficult to set that stuff up when you're playing against someone that is like actively watching you and like paying very close attention to what you're doing it's it's pretty hard to get like to get stuff in on them sometimes so that's usually what's happening is it's micro movements to gain positional or uh, to gain positional advantage or to get to threat ranges mm -hmm. and then from there it's like trying to get a clean hit so like that was a stray hit that was a stray hit <laughs> like yeah, they all yeah they all yeah, seem to be like, that way. Right. Um. So I guess, what are the? This is gonna be a really fucking vague question, but I guess. Sure. Go for it. Um, are there are there gonna be moves in the neutral that uh, Falco and Fox are gonna opt for for better straight? Like if they know they're probably only gonna get the straight hits instead, because obviously mm -hmm. like grab would be something more. I feel that you would go for like clean hits, right? Grab would maybe end right. up in combos. Is there things that? Um, work better against either character in terms of like moves for stray hits. Like, is there some, some like moves that Fox might opt so, for against Falco, vice versa? You know, right? It's less for Falco just because his combo and punish game is a lot more direct and requires like a clean hit. And even with like he does have grab follow ups, but the grab follow ups come with like certain conditions. People, um, people have to know how to SDI out of the lasers. So if they hold straight up and they wiggle the stick diagonal and up, both left and right, what they can do is they can SDI all the lasers and then Falco can't get a follow-up. So if oh, they you mean the lasers from that, the grab. Sorry, I was like, what? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, you... yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Um, and if they do that, then he doesn't really get any true follow -up. Believe I, I I'm I'm almost 100 percent certain it's it's like that against most of the characters. I think it's like that for pretty much every character actually. But anyway, um, so if he can't get like true combos off of grab, then he has to land a clean hit in neutral. Otherwise, he's just not he's just not gonna get like he's just gonna have to um build all those stray hits and like wall people out and stuff, which takes a long time. And Falco's like Falco wants to deal a lot of damage, right? Like. Uh -huh. Falco doesn't want to play the neutral game too much. But like you were talking about with stray hits, you can build a game plan off of stray hits, and I think that's okay too. So like going to smaller stages as Fox and going for like the shine knockdowns to just get Gimps off the edge, like I think that's totally fine, right? Because uh -huh. you can turn like a stray hit, you can turn like a stray hit into into something pretty bad against Falco as Fox on small stages. Because if he like if he jumps to shine, or I'm sorry, if he jumps to laser and you like run in and there or shine him, then like he's going off stage and then you just get a free hit and it's just like if he doesn't do that and you run into like a rising down air then you should be able to like um what is it you should i think you, yeah if you run into like a, a true rising down air then you should be able to shield unless you're like too high a percent before he can land i think okay let me cut you let me cut in a second i just sure. want to go over something you said just now so sure. um Sorry, I'm going to go back to the, the Falgo thing you said, where you said uh, Falgo ideally doesn't want to play the neutral too much um, and needs to opt to get like, clean hits and stuff like that. But for instance, in, 
Falco? Well, oh, Falco. No, I mean, yeah, Falco, I mean, Falco definitely wants to play neutral, but, like, it, it, he has to be incredibly safe, and he either needs to take a lot of time or he needs to set positions up really quickly. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah. But you said um, that he needs to, like, opt to get more clean hits than he does... Um, oh, right, right, right. Like, stray yeah. hits instead. But mm -hmm. in this match so far, I've only noticed uh, Mango go for, like... Like, he hasn't he hasn't got, like, combos on, on Leffen. Mm -hmm. So... Right. So, yeah, I guess I want to ask a little bit more about that, I suppose. The, okay. the Fox stuff makes sense, because Fox is fucking broken, and I'm sure he can get away with whatever the fuck hits he wants. But, yeah. but yeah. Falco, Falco, I'm a little bit more interested in, just on the basis that... I don't want okay. to say he's the worst character, but you get the concept. <laughs> right. Fox, or I'm sorry, uh, Falco's a really interesting character, and I like him a lot, just because I think he has a lot of similarities to Marth, actually. Um, but the thing for Falco is you he's like his whole game plan is slowing someone down and putting them in a position where they can't react and i mean you could say that about a lot of characters but not every character has access to a tool like laser laser you get hit by laser and it's 12 frames of stun right unless you like crouch cancel it or unless like you shield it i think it's different because shield stun's different than than hits or it should be at least. yeah i think it is i think it is different i think there might actually be less shield stun than there is hit stun isn't but it two for shield stun and four hit stun or something like that something stupid isn't it oh i don't know i'm not exactly sure on it but um i do think it is less shield stun but the reason why you usually don't want to shield falco lasers is because when you shield you stick yourself into that state uh-huh so like if you get stuck in shield your only options are roll spot dodge jump and that's like pretty much it right mm -hmm. and if your opponent knows that then falco can just like falco can get in on you he can laser you to get you to shield and then he can set position up. and now it's like it's an unreactable position and it puts a lot of positional pressure on the opponent when they're there and then they're forced to get around falco right they're forced to try and move around him and if falco throws a feint out and they fall for it then he just gets a big beefy fucking combo i see so there's a few extra steps with, um, what is it? There's a, yeah, there's a few extra steps with Falco than there is with some of the other characters, but it's like, I think it's still fine. I think, <clears throat> I think, uh, obviously Falco's still a crazy good character and he can still do it. It's just, and his punish game is already good, but, um, there are like a few more ways of getting around some of his stuff that might make it really trouble for, troublesome for him in the long run. Anyway, I'm rambling again. It's... Okay, so if, if, um... <clears throat> so I, so Falco doesn't usually have, like, many guaranteed combos, right? Because... Um... <clears throat> if, we'll if that, like, so then how do you differ it? Like, I know, I get the stray hits are just, like, uh, mm -hmm. you get the chip damage and stuff in neutral, but how, how do you kind of, um, recognize when someone's going for, or not necessarily going for a stray hit, I'm sure people are going more for clean hits, but how do you recognize right. the difference between someone going for chip damage or someone failing at getting like a clean hit into a combo? Someone, uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat? So, repeat the so for instance, um, so chat's like talking to me on the side, so I, I know someone sure, said sure, a really sure. good point. So um, I asked earlier about, uh, it was when you told me about clean clean hits and stray hits and, and stuff like that. And I said, well, right. you know, Mango hasn't done any like, like combos as such on Leffen and mm, um someone in yeah. chat said like he tried to he just like uh like wasn't successful I guess um sure, how sure. how the fuck do you know that <laughs> like how do you know like how do you recognize the difference oh, between like a failed okay, gotcha, like gotcha. a failed clean hit into combo versus like a, just a stray chip damage like what what moves would Mango be using that I would know, like, oh, shit, he tried to get a combo here, but it just didn't work. Like, how how do you recognize gotcha. that? So, uh, I, hmm, to explain that really well, I think I need to dive into... New okay. If that's okay? Yeah, of course. So there's um, there's a few concepts to neutral that I think are really important, but um, the, the primary one is something called threat range, right? And that's where... <clears throat> actually, PP has a really, really good quote on this. Let me pull that up real fast. Yeah. I, I know about, like, threat range and, like... Like, okay, uh, right. yeah, I understand. So, that. yeah, so from threat range, there are what I call, and what a lot of people will call, like, primary tools. Those are the tools that you're going to mostly use to win neutral, right? And 
They're a lot more than what some people think, but they're less lenient than what others might think. So, like, the best way for me to explain that is there are things like short hop rising nair, right? That is a nair, all right? That's that's a good opening tool for Falco. If somebody jumps into that, he gets a really beefy combo, right? Because if it's early percent, especially still, they can't uh, crouch it. And even if they do crouch it, if we do late nair, we can get a shine. So nair, depending on the kind of nair it is, will lead into a really good clean hit. Okay. So um, other ways are... Let's see. So there's that. There's you could down air as well. Like down air is pretty all right too. If people show you that they want to do a lot of like crouch canceling and stuff, and that's okay as well. Um, other than that, it's pretty much like the the opponent like really really focused and worried about that kind of approach. The jump the jump approach from Falco in a position where <laughs> if they jump, they get hit by whatever aerial he does immediately, right? And then they have to really really be aware of that and like worry about it right so we talked about like the mid height let's let's call it like a minus six and uh minus six and on nair so like falco from here right he short hops and then does like a nair like right here and then fast falls right if he does like the nair like right here and then fast falls that's normally going to beat a grab from any character right so okay. then to do a better one to beat shine out of shield and to beat some other stuff he has to do a deeper nair right so he has to jump and then like aerial fast fall into somebody and then go for like shine and that kind of stuff so his nair is a really really big primary tool but there's a bunch of different ways of using it right so so it's, it's <clears> on the basis of yeah so it's where where you position like your your nair and shit like that okay mm -hmm. yeah it all depends and it all depends on previous conditioning too so like or I guess, hmm, let's see. Yeah, I guess conditioning's fine to say, but it depends on the outcomes of previous neutral interactions too. So yeah, I understand that like conditioning and yeah, okay. like that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. I guess it's more that I'm not familiar with, as much with the mechanics of like what a high near does and what a late near does and like a medium fucking near and shit like that. So I guess right. that's where I'm struggling a little bit. But I, I understand. I just. Yeah, so that, like, so I understand that mm -hmm. that's, like, an early, like, like, you know, it's a high near and shit like that, but I don't understand the benefits compared to, like, a, a low near. Right, right. So, like, think, just thinking about it, like, <clears throat> I think Mango probably did this expecting Leffen to not react to it, or to not be able to react to it, and I'm actually pretty fucking amazed that Leffen reacted to this here with S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, this seems to clearly <laughs> be a reaction to me. Yeah, that's fucking crazy, actually. Let's see. Actually, I want to count that real fast and see how many frames that was from... Okay. I'm, like, mega interested in this for just one second. So yeah, no, you're fine. Uh, let me just reach out a second. So, um, sure, go he got a shield drop deer and hit the deer, but the shine uh, didn't hit him because left was too low of a percent and got a shield out. How you know when it's failed or successful depends on the percent and the opponent's mitigating factors, as I call them, that prevent someone from getting a combo or a conversion. Those mitigating mitigating factors include DI, SDI, CC, ECT. Um, <laughs> same arc, that PS was absurd. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty fucking yeah, close. Right, crazy. right. Um, you got a power shield drop there. and Oh, I, I, I just opened up a chat. I'm reading it real fast, but the shine didn't hit. Like it was too low. I don't think it was because he was too low. I think the whole situation. Okay, so like, I don't think he got hit by. I don't think that was a shield drop. I think he. I think the positioning was that left and full hop in and then tried to do. If I can remember this right, left and full hops in on Mango, tries to get an up tilt, accidentally reverses it, gets short hop rising down aired by Mango, and then he SDIs that out just enough to make Shine whiff on the hit, but it's still. Mango went into the shine to protect himself, and the shine hit the extended shield, and then he got shine grabbed from it. I think that's correct. Let me see if that's right or not. Let's play this in regular speed. Uh, I just want to be really, really fast about this. Ah, oh, damn it. You think I? You think I'm thinking of a different spot? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. If I'm thinking of a different spot, then that doesn't matter. So. <clears throat> okay. Oh, whoops, I don't think we were this far yet. 
Yeah, now now it looks like Van Gogh's getting kind of impatient and he's trying to knock him down. Because if, if Van Gogh calls him and knocks him onto a platform down here, then he just gets like tech chasing unless he does slide off. And if, if Leffen does slide off, it's like whatever. Mango just like drops through the center part of the top platform, right? Wherever he landed on, and then he has center stage. Mm-hmm. So. And he'll get knocked down on like slightly higher percents than this? Or how, how will Mango get knocked down? Um, Basically, just like down air. If he like YOLO down airs or nares, like if, if Mango has to read or call. Um, left and full hopping or double jumping to the uh, top platform, right? So uh, Mango is kind of forced to hit um, Leffen before or as Leffen's trying to set the platform stuff up. So if 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 Mango dashes in and full hop downers into the top platform the same time that Fox full hops to the platform, then Falco's just gonna hit him, right? Right. Okay. So with either a downer or a nair, and then that's like the idea behind it. And he's getting like really impatient. He expected, so he expected Leffen to move off the side of the platform here. So like he expected Leffen to land on this platform and then jump back onto top or like run off, double jump back to the top, which is why he throws this out because he's trying to prevent him from getting back to top platform, right? Oh, uh, I see. And now he's cornered him, right? Now he's cornered, but. It's bad because they're both zeroed out. So, like, they're both actionable when they land. So they both have to respect each other. Right? That's why, like, Leffen gets aggressive because he doesn't have very much stage. And it's probably a better idea for him to press an advantage anyway. Because, like, if he just, like, goes and gets a knockdown or something like that, then it's not that bad. So he just dashes into him just to check him. So he gets aggressive. Uh, Mango does this back air, which is insanely good. So normally, like... Anyway, I won't talk about the laser back here mix up. <clears throat> okay. Wait, so what wait, why was that back here good? Just to keep him in the corner? So the backer was really, really good on Mango's part because um it can catch him trying to move above Falco and it can it can uh if if they get really aggressive, if Fox tried to run in and nair here, like if he tries dashing in and short hop nairing him for, or nairing uh Mango for lasering then instead of lasering, if they dash away, short hop rising back air, they just jump into a auto cancel back air. I see. So it just covers a lot of things. R right. It can cover. It, it protect. Think of it this way: protects you overall against most um, horizontal aggression, like grounded aggression and like short hop aggression. Like any any distance between like grounded and like right here, it can protect really well against against Fox. Okay. Um. So. Then, like I said, the only thing that they can really do about the mix-up between this and laser is full hopping, right? <clears throat> so, yeah, this is just a way for you to protect a laser. Think of it like, I mean, that's like probably a, a pretty important use of it, I guess. Okay. So, at least specifically for this matchup. It has tons of uses even in this matchup. Oh, he finally got it right. He finally called Leffen going. So he shoots laser. Just said, I see. What's up? Uh, watch what happens when Mango hits that there. But everything works. So it's really good. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. So he finally calls him for going to top platform here. Let's see how he punishes this, because this is kind of a. Okay. Yeah, that was kind of a really awkward position. So like, even I think if he like shined, I don't. I'm not convinced Shine would have connected here, just because of like. I don't know. It's just kind of a strange thing. So, <clears throat> uh, Mango puts shield up, right? I, I'm pretty confident Shine might have whiffed here. Um, so he puts shield up, and then shield drops through. And even if Leffen does like regular getup attack, like he can shield it and double, or he can, uh, what is it? He can shield drop and then double jump down here like he did here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yep. Then Mango gets a little risky with it. Uh, yeah. That was kind of... I think Mango probably should have... Anyway, I'm not analyzing Mango. I'm trying to go over punish stuff. There we go. That was good, too. That's another use for the Bicker. There was Monka S. Yeah, that Nair was kind of... That Nair was kind of slow. Um, again, if um, one of people's like... 
one of people's only options in, to get aggressive when their back is facing towards a character is to wave dash towards them or to jump and attack them, right? At a shield. Mm. And if he jumps to try and attack him, or if he like wave dashes into him, if Falco dashes back here and then just does jump back air, then he beats most of what Fox can do in this position. Same with uh, Falco against himself. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I think Fox could have done is like probably jump out and then back at him like immediately and then prevented Falco from being able to jump to get out of that situation. But other than that, I don't really think there was a whole lot he could have done. And anything else would have kind of been at risk too, probably. So Okay. Mm. The the lasers are a really, really important that people kind of gloss over, by the way. So like lasering people and learning how to laser them is like this, like letting go from laser and then lasering him once and lasering him again just to get him lower is like actually just so insanely good for falco and this is, should be like a really big part of his, his staple play um because if they're lower they only get access to up b if they're like below the ledge they only have access to up b if they don't have to double jump yeah otherwise they you know like otherwise they can mix up a side b or up b and that's kind of like difficult to deal with so <clears throat> yeah uh, those lasers aren't easy, by the way. Yeah, those lasers are, can be really, really difficult. You have to do, like, a really weird, like, um, half circle, and then, like, yeah, you have to do, like, a half circle off stage, and then you use, like, tap jump to double jump from ledge, and then you, like, laser and drift back towards stage. It's very, very, what? I think what the, <laughs> what, um, I think what Esquire is trying to say is it's incredibly easy to kill yourself in, in, like, this position. When you're trying to set that laser up, it's very easy to just accidentally die. You're gonna time the fast forward to either hit one of those lasers from the ledge. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, I see what he was talking about, too. Because you also, yeah, you also have to do, uh, do you, you also have to do the fast forward to get the time, to get the laser height, right? Huh. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Leffen went for the back air that time. They got stuck in, like, the similar position, and then Leffen just, like, immediately jumps out of shield and back airs. Space animals back airing their shields. Whoa. <laughs> or back airing each other. Okay. Ooh, this should be a good position. Damn. Yeah. Mango <laughs> keeps trying to get aggressive because he's not getting anything. So... I imagine this, a lot of this will change. All right, so, like, this is really, really good for Falco. He just wants to get out of position. Let's see. Okay. Whoops, did I go back? You went hella far back, I think, yeah. Okay. You gotta jump right, to let's the just start on the start. Let's start on the start. B reverse the lasers? What the fuck does B reverse the lasers mean? So if you are jumping and you hit a direction, like if you're jumping and let's say you're facing left, right? And we're Falco. If we hit right and then B, if we hit the right direction and then B, what happens is Falco will turn around and do the laser in that direction. Oh, is that it? Is that all that is? Okay. Yeah, that's all that is. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Unless, I don't know if it's any different in, like, a different game and, like, the different Smash games, but that's, like, not important. Okay. Does, I mean, after we talked about the, the Fox Punish, all this is making a lot of right? Like. Yeah, yeah, the throwing on the Fox okay. Punish, shit like that. Oh, my God. Lol. I think Leffen might have just messed up and then Mango took advantage. Mango not, might not have even taken advantage, but I think Leffen might have literally just messed up. Uh, if you hit B while you're holding that direction, you'll side B. Oh, I see. Oh, did I say hold? If I said hold, I meant tap. My bad. Okay. Wait, so what did Leffen do that was fucked up? Um, on his punish, he just messed his punish up, that's all, and then died for it, so, like, he got really greedy for this shine, he should have just stayed on stage, I think, right here, mm. it was kind of hard to tell, because, like, the angles are really, really similar, because it was a difference of, like, that angle, and, like, this angle, uh -huh. which is, like, not that much, right, like, yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to tell, 
just like that and that. So yeah, I think uh, he just missed all that happened is Leffen just misjudged it and then got killed for it. That's okay. literally all that happened there. So <clears throat> okay, yep, Mango just wants to get away. Reset. Okay, yep gets punished and see that's when starts stuff starts getting really annoying is when is when falco starts like trying to cover fox for going high but fox still gets higher before falco does sometimes mm -hmm. um and then he like throws out an extra attack or he attacks like or baits falco into start going for the top platform that's we'll probably also see some of that in the next game if if we play on another tri platform or if they play on another tri platform stage You see how he's not getting like anyway, never mind. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna <laughs> What? I'm like mega analysis mode right now and I'm just trying to focus on punish. No, it's okay, you can tell me it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, fine. Okay. I've got it all recorded, so it's fine. I can just go back okay. anytime. You go nuts. Gotcha. <laughs> so what okay. right, what happened? <laughs> so let's see. So does the die Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. No, what happened there? All right, let's see. Okay, he throws shield out, comes back into the corner. He gets a knockdown, up tilt, reverses, shield out, roll away, reset neutral. Right, okay, so what I expect to start seeing Leffen do if they play on another tri-platform stage, since Mango is starting to try and get like more aggressive and like more proactive and calling out Leffen for going to top platform, mm -hmm. I imagine that Leffen's probably going to abuse this against Mango. So he's going to faint going for top platform, force Mango to go up there, and then uh, gain positional advantage and try and set up a punish on him for doing so. Mm -hmm. um, also, if Fox gets to the platform before Falco does, or like another Fox does, they can set up like another aerial. They can get onto the platform and then jump again into something and then prevent Falco from being able to retaliate. Because if they get to the plat, if Fox gets to the platform first and then throws out like another aerial, Fal there's very, very little Falco can do other than maybe squeak in like an up air or like wait for him to land and then just like shine him, right? And so if like, if, if Mango just like, Let's say Mango is still back on the ground and then he was right here. If he jumps in place, if instead of doing anything, Mango just like full hops and then like double jumps or like full hop double jumps and attacks him as he falls under the platform, then he's gonna get he's gonna get a hit. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, like I said, if we play if they play on another tri stage, I'm probably gonna expect to see a lot of that stuff. So okay. that is like also a really crazy good positioning. So Instead of instead of just immediately landing on top platform, what um, what Leffen does here is from the side he goes and full hops, and so if Falco moves forward at all, Leffen just drops down with a back air. Uh -huh. Instead, it, yeah. Mango tries lasering here, right, to to punish him landing. So instead of that, he double jumps back. Now, when he set this up, Mango has to move. If Mango doesn't move, he has to shield. Otherwise, he's he's just gonna get hit by back air, right? I see. And then he sets the laser up again. Yeah. And then now, let's see. Oh, okay, right. So the whole thing about all of this that I didn't really like is that Leffen so far hasn't been retaliating with Shine Out of Shield almost at all. And he's been really, really respecting Mango's uh, pressure game. So Mango needs to either be throwing in, I think, more grabs, or he needs to be throwing in more weights, I think, here. So, like, he gets really aggressive in on him. And then after, like, that next one, I think he probably should have, like, started shining and then wave dashing back or, like, maybe do a really, really late air jab. Because, again, if he, like, late aerials like that into jab, he doesn't stick himself into shine. If you stick yourself into shine and they decide to roll, you don't really get a punish from it. But I think the best you can do is you can short hop out of shine and laser whichever direction that they roll to. And then they're at threat range and they just took a laser again. So like then neutral kind of resets, but it is a little bit of a positional advantage for Falco, right? But I think it's so much better if they would have just waited. If, if, if instead of, of shining and committing to that, 
if they had done a really, really deep aerial to show their opponent, hey, if you try and shine out a shield me, I'm just going to do this like really frame tight shine, and there's very little you could probably do about it. And I can mix it up with like double shines too. So if you show that and then jab instead, you don't stick yourself into shine. And if they roll after you jab, then you can just grab them. You can just dash in and grab them and punish them. Mm-hmm. So. <clears throat> Um, hold on. Uh, what is Chet saying? You mean quicker as in, like, jump speed, or as in he wants to go up there first and neutral? Oh, Esquire. All I meant is that the Fox... So, like, the actions go this way, right? Falco does something. Fox is already on his way moving up to top platform. Falco uh, recognizes this and I... then tries to punish Fa- Fox for doing that, and then they, yeah... I think he's responding then, to someone in chat because someone said, "Is Fox typically able to get to the top platform quicker than Falco?" And he was like, "Oh shit, I jump? didn't even see that." Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, gotcha. You're responding to a question. Oh, okay, my bad, my bad. All right, cool. Okay, let's see. That was that was actually really annoying and good, but. So Leffen falls down with a back air here to put pressure on Mango, right? And then moves away from him. And then he sets the exact same position up, but instead of back airing this time, he just empty lands and grabs him. Because mm-hmm. he's he's already made him want to shield in this position, and like there's really no reason Mango shouldn't have shielded there, honestly. If like if he caught on to it, he could have been able to roll probably, but even then, um Yeah. Even then, it, it still would have been pretty good for, for Lef. Whiffing, whiffing an up tilt that's like Fox or Falco really doesn't matter that much unless it's against like a character that can deal with those, with those moves really well. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. Uh, he got risky on on that. That was a really good back here. That back here, um, Fox and Falco defend against full hops. So he technically should have dashed back a little bit further, and I think he might have even like outright downer. Let's see what what frame is downer on. So that's one, two, three. So he gets hit after the third frame of downer. Okay, so there's probably not a way that drill is gonna come out. Drill probably had like two or three more frames to come out. Let me double check that. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. One second. I just want to double double check and make sure I'm right. I didn't realize Falco's um, back here was like the, the full hop killer. I didn't realize. It can be. I mean, it can also be like used against uh, Falco too. So there's like you can run in and sh- you could like if you do run in and then full hop and then you mix that with run in and shield. He does a rising backer as you're moving in on shield. So like. He drifts into you, and you're, like, running into him with momentum. He's going to land right in front of you, and Fox can just, like, get a free grab because he does the the backer so high. Unless he, like, unless the backer barely whiffs the shield and then he fast falls with the, with the like, earlier part of it, then he can get, like, shine out before Fox can do something. But if Fox just, like, run in and uh, shields like that sometimes, there's not really a whole lot that, that uh, the Falco can do. I see. And so... So if it's like a fox that like kind of if if, um, back is, excuse me. <clears throat> if if there's like a fox who like just full hops too much, Falco can just like call it out with a back air usually. And that, like obviously if they don't have the mix up like that you were just talking about, but Right. Well it heavily depends on the type of full hop that they're doing too. If they're if they're if they're like let's say this is the position, Fox you see where the stock count is, right? Yeah. This is where Fox is and this is where Falco is. If Fox keeps dashing in and full hopping in on, on Falco, and Falco keeps dashing away right here to short hop and throw a back air out, if instead of, like, even then, that's fine. Like, Fox doesn't necessarily have to go for the full hops here, right? He could literally just dash forward once and just wait, right? If he sets the position up right, then Falco just moves away and you gain space. Gaining stage space and neutral is just as good as getting a hit. It's so freaking good. I see. Okay. All right. Let's see. When does drill come out? One, two, three, four, five. I was right. There is exactly one extra. Well, technically, 
Yeah. Okay, so it comes out on frame five. He got hit on frame three. So he had one more frame before it came out. But I th I'm like almost 100% sure Backer probably still would have prioritized it anyway, maybe. But anyway, 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 that's like mega nut. So. I think that might have been a DI trap that Mango was trying to set up here. So I think he... I think he was trying to make Leffen think about setting up like a short hop into weak nair. Because if, if Falco does short hop weak nair here and Leffen falls into it, who would he even have fallen into? Yeah, he definitely would have been able to do it. So Mango had like dash this way and then dashed in, dashed out, short hop nair, sour spot hit, and then forward smash, then like that would have just decimated him. So. He was probably trying to get Leffen to think he was setting that up, and then he wanted to do the dash in, dash back, and then just short hop back air in. Because if, if Leffen holds it out and he tries doing the Nair setup, he just gets away and doesn't get smashed, right? But if he, um, or like an extra hit, I don't know if F smash would have connected specifically, but the point is, if, if Leffen had done survival DI on that Nair, then Mango would have gotten another free hit, for sure. I see, I see. Um, <clears throat> so, what, Leffen, what, he, what Mango thought Leffen probably wanted to do was hold away so that he doesn't get an extra hit, which is why Mango wanted to go for the back here. If Mango backers him, like, sweet spot backers him here, and he's holding away, he just, he just like, gets shit on, yeah. But he didn't catch it. I don't think so. Yeah, and then that was really good. Uh, what was this again? Uh, sure. Drill. Sorry, I was just having a real quick look at chat. My bad. Um, okay. Our smash isn't bad at like low to mid percents, but it's risky. Drill's also good. It can lead to shine. Up to detailed. Uh, shine runs max down, so hitting a shine for Fox is good too and leads into whatever they want. For Falco, it's a bit more linear and depends on a lot of counterplay. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. Sorry, I was just we're just catching up. That's okay. Um, I can. I I think I can agree with that. Um, yeah, I that think was... I can agree with that. I can I can see where you're coming from with saying that he's a counter character, or he can be primarily played counterplay like that. I think Falco actually also has the ability to get hyper aggressive, but like, there's also a lot of really like. Um, there's still there's still in in this game a really big misconception about aggression. Uh, a lot of people think aggression means just like running forward and attacking, but all aggression really is is just moving forward and showing some kind of aggressive intent. Whether or not you attack is like a completely different thing. But like, <clears throat> just threatening yeah. them basically. Just just yeah, essentially just threatening them. Because what I talked about earlier, right? Players oh. gaining stage base is just as good as getting a hit. So like. When we realize and understand that what everything becomes is a battle of trying to set up certain positions, right? And create positional pressure on people. Mm -hmm. So like, hmm, let's see. I wish we had like a little stage and then you could just move the characters around and be like, this is, <laughs> that'd be fucking sick. Um, I do have, I just got Netplay, but like, I don't know how good our connection would be. Oh, it'd be awful. Already trash. Yeah, it'd be horrendous. Right, right, yeah. right, right. But like a little okay. piece of paper with like little drawings of <laughs> Fox and Falcon. <laughs> right. Okay, so Mango gets a clean hit here. He kind of messed, floods this up a little bit. Yeah, I think he flooded that up just because like, so he, he gets the shine here. Yeah, What's okay. up? So I was going to say, can you just rewind it, but you got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So he gets the shine here, right? And after this, I think he should have waited. If, if, if Mango had waited, then he could have gotten what we talked about with, with Fox, right? If Mango waits right here, if Fox does literally anything, he's going to get shined, right? If Fox doesn't do anything, then Mango should have been able... Oh, oh, shit, I'm not thinking about this, actually. That's why he didn't do that. Fuck. Okay. Hmm. Wait, speak. If, if Shine, <laughs> what's that? If um, if Shine gets staled and then you try and full hop, so like if you if you stale your Shine and hit Fox onto like the platform here and you Shine him again, what happens is it gets staled and Fox is immediately actionable. Oh, why that's would that? that why weird, is that a thing? That's the, that weird loop thing where people just like they rise really fast and they're in neutral and they're in neutral falling animation, right? And they can literally do anything they want. What the fuck? Okay. It's yeah, it's it's really really obnoxious. I forgot how big of an issue that was for for Falco. Okay, gotcha. So that's, that's just probably a Falco why thing? he didn't do that. 
Um, it just happens with Valkyr Shine. It doesn't really happen with foxes. I think foxes is like set knockback mostly. That's funny. Yeah, I think. Ass. I, wait, I think. I think. I think foxes is actually just set knockback. I could be wrong on that, but I think that's correct. No, it is correct. That is definitely. That is definitely. Um, that is definitely set knockback. Okay. Wait, can you anyway, tell me so, yeah. tell me more about that before we we continue with this bit? Sure. Uh, wait. Tell you more about what? Um, so Falco Shine stales after what, like one hit? And then um, it, it, it affects it might not be one hit, but it's enough to get people to not want to practice that kind of a setup. Because, let me see, I might be able to get my buddy to make a gif of this for me. Okay. Hold on. And then I could just send it to you. Um, yeah, I'd like to know about more about this uh, Falco stale shine shit. Because I, I want to know like how it affects it and shit. Because I don't actually think, I, mm, I don't know. It's really hard to say. Yeah, because I th I feel like without understanding that, I don't quite understand this this uh, situation. Right, right. Um. Okay, hold on. Let me shit. I'm sorry. Give me just one second. Take your time. Take your time. I, in fact, I'm gonna pee. So. Okay. Take yeah, go for it. <laughs> <clears throat> um. Hello, chat. How is everyone doing? I hope you're all well. I hope everyone's enjoying me being a giant fucking nerd about the game. <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny. I was just like saying hi to everyone, and I look at the view counting too. It's like, eh, well, that's fair. <laughs> oh my god. Hi, right, thanks for this. Yeah, I can't, Daddy. No problem. Thanks for your input, too, Esquire. I appreciate it. Pretty much camp. Uh, it's really really driven. Marth can damp. Fuck it. Lasers. Fuck slow hops. Fuck bears. The list goes on and on. Right, right. Yeah. Same, Esquire. I, I've done analysis for an incredibly long time. It oh, is. Okay. Probably some of my most favorite stuff to do. My favorite thing to do is coming up with counter meta. That is like by far my favorite thing. Any yeah. luck? What's up? Any luck with the? You said your friend was messaging you something. Oh 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 yeah. Um, they haven't gotten back to me yet. It's probably gonna take them a little bit to even make that gif. That's okay. It's fine. Yeah. Sorry for so... asking fucking stupid questions but no it's not stupid it's definitely not stupid i'll say that um yeah no this is i mean that's a really really important thing to note falco like i think it's i honestly think it's after three shines is when that happens but i might be wrong it might be two i'm not 100 percent sure so i have to get that figured out how about this the second that i get that figured out i'm just gonna link that to you yeah okay? of course that's fine if I get the GIF, um, I'm just going to go ahead and send it to you. So, okay. So he gets this here. And I think what could have been better than jumping up and down airing, because we think he's probably already going to want to try and slide off, right? So I think, like, either going for, like, up air. Yeah, that was so, that was actually just so bad. Now he's in such an awful position. I think he might still get back, though. Mm, probably not. Did he try to? Yeah. Well, he followed it up with the back air, right? So did it mean that he just thought the left one was going to, like, slide off and roll or something or like what, what was he anticipating so i think what happened here is he might have been trying to fast fall through or he might have been trying to drop through and do reverse sweet spot back air which would have pushed leffen onto the ledge 
and then he could have moved back to to put positional pressure again, or mm-hmm. to start up positional pressure and advantage from the ledge. So um, I think that might have been what he was going for, but he hit a little too um, shallow. So he hits the shield a little too shallow and then gets grabbed and shined for it. Or not shined, sorry, grabbed and, and back room. Yeah, that shine was so good. And this dash attack just like seals the deal. Oh shit! He's still, never mind. Mango's <laughs> crazy. Mango's actually crazy. He was just done with that game. All right. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, do you have any questions about anything we've covered so far? Um, no, I think I'm, we're good so far. Okay. So things that I'm going to be looking at for this matchup, um, really, really key points. Leffen got a lot out of using top platform. So I think um, I think Leffen's probably going to be trying to look for counterplay. I think probably what's going to happen is Mango's probably going to start punishing that a little bit better if, if Leffen keeps going for it this game. So I want to really look out for that. And then see if Leffen starts coming up with counterplay for it. I also want to really, really check out and look for um, Mango's Punish, though. Because Mango's Punish was, like, not really there that game. It was very difficult for him to get anything set up. So. And just to just to confirm that, like, so Leffen keeps up using top platform and Mango can commit to going up there with, like, a down air or, or something like that. Right. Mango can, Mango can hard call Fox going for platforms with, like, down air or nair. So, and it's usually, I mean, Falco can do the same thing, right? Falco can, like, move to top platform, too. It doesn't help him out, like, it, it doesn't help him out as much, specifically in this matchup, just because getting under Fox is kind of risky sometimes for Falco. But it can help out a lot in other matchups, so. Why, uh, why not back air? Um, uh, like, why near and not back air? In which, uh, position? Uh, so you said um, Falco can commit and go up there and, and kind of challenge Fox with um, down air or nay. And I oh, right, right, right. Because um, you can't really gain a whole lot of forward momentum and do back air like that. Because back air comes out behind him, right? And if you're dashing and jumping forward, if you get back air, you're just going to get a sour spot if you're not just going to get beat out of whatever the fuck you're doing. Okay. Right? Because, like, let's look at back air just real fast. And... Uh, Falco, SSBM, hit boxes. <clears throat> no, God, son of a... <laughs> Ree! All right. Ree! Ree! Um, let's see. F-Tilt's crazy good. F-Tilt's so good. So let's see. So backer comes out, frame four. He's got a big, pretty scary hitbox on it too. But if Falco wants to dash forward and then full hop, because let's say top platform is right here, right? Or uh, let's say it's like right here, uh-huh. and then side platform is like right here, right? If, if Falco dashes forward and then full hops to to cut Fox off, if he does this backer, the hitboxes are either below or further away from Fox. So if Fox throws a nair out or like an a, a, a nair or like a drill at the same time that Fox throws back air out or like close to the same time he's usually just going to get his head hit right or oh, close okay. to the same time I yeah see. so like because he's dashing forward right he's dashing and full forward and then if you do back air like that then it doesn't really it doesn't really help you out at all so you need something that has a forward hitbox on it like nair because see nair is like very much in front of him and downer is diagonally and below him so that's like also really really good and downer just has like crazy priority too it's like yeah just like a downer so could falco so i know you said falco could go on the top platform too but um mm-hmm. falco could just come down with with uh dare too right like as a protective move to come falco down could with. come down with dare you're absolutely correct yes he could come down with dare uh dare he could, or wait, 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 you mean come down off of top platform with there? Yeah, yeah. Yes, that is true. Um, there's kind of a pretty big mix-up for Falco when he gets on the platform like that. He can drop through the platform, but he can, like, short hop, drop through it, and then short shoot a laser. And then he can mix that up with dash short hop off, and then he can, like, get aggressive at people staying in the corners, right? Because if, if, if they're, like, let me get back to the game real fast. Okay. So if, um, if Mango's, like, 
let's say it's against the character that isn't Fox and Mango's on top platform, and they're like on the side right here, or they're like right here, right? If they're right here and we drop through, they're gonna move away from us slightly. They're gonna expect us to, um, they're gonna expect us to throw an aerial out, and they're gonna try and whiff punish our aerial. So instead of aerialing, if we drop, if we like short hop drop through, do the B reverse or turn around and laser them, we hit them as they dash back. We're in center stage and they're in the corner now. Okay. Right? So that's like a bad, bad thing. They don't want to do that. So they might want to try and jump up to you and attack you when you come off the platform. And if you come off the platform, if you short hop, fall through and like nair or down air, they just jump into that aerial, right? I see. And you mix that up. So, and then you just get a, a crazy punish off of that, hopefully. I noticed you said, um, let's think of a character that isn't Fox, though, when you said that. Why not against Fox? So, it's a little different against Fox, just because Fox is so fast and his vertical mobility is so good. He can, he can sneak under Falco a lot. And that's like, or I'm sorry, not his vertical, I meant horizontal. His horizontal stuff is really, really good. And Fox can get under Falco and be really, really really fucking obnoxious with shit so falco has to kind of respect that a lot more than he normally would against most characters it's still good versus fox to like please don't misunderstand me it's still very very good it's just there is more risk involved i see so then then there would be normally i guess so fox would kind of like stop him doing a like a drop down down air or like a short hop laser down with like something like near or like right right oh well i mean like not even necessarily if if um if Falco's at top and he drops through, what Fox can do is Fox can like dash and then full hop. Right? He can he can either set this up with a dash full hop or he can just run in, right? If they drop through and try and laser, then if 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 Fox baits Falco into thinking the laser is safe by staying a little further away or moving further away, he can dash away, wait a second, and then start running in. And if Falco drops through to set a laser up, Fox just gets a run in shine, right? And then that's a knockdown. That is exactly what Fox wants. He's that so, quick, huh? <clears throat> exactly. He's he's really that fast. And so if Falco starts mixing it up by like short hopping and then dropping through with like an aerial, Fox can mix it up with dash in, full hop in place, and then land on top of Falco. Either land on top of Falco after he whiffs the aerial and just like straight up punish him. Or if the timing's slightly off, he dashes in, full hops, realizes that Falco lands and is going to do like an up tilt or be actionable. And then Fox just double jumps the top platform. And, and then now the position got the lead. I see, I see, I see. Right, right. Got it. With you. So it's... <clears throat> yeah. Dude, Fox is fucked up. Fox is pretty crazy. Fox has got a lot of stuff. Fox has got a lot of stuff. There is a lot of counterplay. There is an insane amount of counterplay to Fox. Oof, that was a really... That was a really risky... Down here. Okay, yeah, so we, uh, ah, oh, right. too slow. <laughs> yeah. That up smash is actually really safe by, uh, Leffen. Which one now? That? Uh, this up smash? Why? Yeah, like, up, up smash, like, up smash against Falco is actually pretty, pretty free sometimes. Because what can happen is if you take, if Fox takes laser into up smash immediately, up smash comes out frame seven and is, like, in front of him, right? Normally, what most Falco players will do is they'll laser once and then dash short hop in to set something up, right? They'll either dash short hop in to shoot or to uh, set up another laser, right? They'll like dash in to shoot another laser, catching like a dash back, or they'll um, they'll shoot a laser and then they'll might shoot another one, or they'll shoot a laser and then jump in and do a delayed attack to set up shield pressure, right? Okay. Or like a rising aerial. If they do any of that and Fox just takes laser takes the first laser into up smash then they lose. If they do any of that, they just get hit by up smash, right? Like, <clears throat> so what happens is Fox gets like a really good combo starter out for free against Falco here. So if Falco shoots a laser and then he shoots another, if we up smash in place, we just take 12 frames of hit stun after the laser, right? And then we're completely actionable again. And it like literally didn't matter. Like we got a free move that would have gotten us a shitload of damage out and we didn't get punished for it. Well, I mean, we did, but, like, for 3 or 2%, right? Like, fuck it. Like, that's definitely worth it. Like, And Falco can't get in fast enough to do anything other than a laser? After, like, to punish <clears> the, um, ups, uh, no. the up smash? Falco, really? Falco can start beating this really, really easily, but if the Falco player doesn't know about it, it's a pretty strong skill check. And every once in a while, it's good to pepper into. Normally, what most good Fox players will do, Levin included, is they'll start doing turnaround up tilts. And turnaround up tilt is incredibly safe. The only way to beat both of those consistently is to laser and bait it. So like laser dash in, dash away, 
and then right after the dash away, confirm that they've up tilted or up smashed, and then dash back in and short hop aerial them, or like grab or anything. Yeah. So I understand the up tilt because obviously up tilt's quite fast, but that's crazy that you can't yeah. do, you like can't punish that up smash other than a laser. Mm-hmm. That's how I don't understand. You you, you can't, like he's just not fast enough, or like it's just the fact that it happens too fast. So the move the move is too fast and there's very little in like the up tilt. I, or wait, were you talking about the up tilt or up smash? Up smash. Oh, the up smash. The up smash. Gotcha. So the up smash is really good because like goal is if he shoots another laser, you just you trade a kill move for it. Like I said before, right? Yeah, yeah. The reason, yeah, the reason why it's so difficult is because it comes out really fast and it covers the area that Falco really wants to be at to set stuff up. Because to set up like a really late aerial into shine to get like either shine pressure or to set up like a shine grab. He needs the aerial like either waste or like a little below, or he can do like barely, barely above and maybe still get a shine out. I I haven't tested like all the specifics specifics of it, but he has to jump drift in first, right? The aerials happen in this area, right? All of Falco's aerials happen in this area. He has to move into that position first, though, right? And that's what's happening is he jumps to set that position up, and he just jumps into up smash, right? Wait, so is so in in this exact <clears throat> frame right now? Mm-hmm. Is the uh, smash hitbox still out? I don't believe so, no. Right, so, yeah. So what I'm confused about here is the, like, mm-hmm. so... Obviously, up smash isn't out anymore. So from this exact mm-hmm. frame... Right. You're telling me then Falco can't jump in right that second and near and punish his up smash. <clears throat> like, he can put, like, put, like, all of this, Let's all of this, see. all of this, he all of this. He probably could have. I don't yeah. know why he did Let's see. Yeah, that's what I was confused about. Like, the up smash, because you said the up smash was safe, but then I was like, well, can he not punish how long it took from that frame that we were on for Fox I think to he reset was back to be... I, I think it was... I think... Okay, hold on. Let me let me rewatch this and, and see what's going on. Just, like, so that I can see it. Sometimes this happens with me where I... You're fine. Oh, okay. Mango... I think Mango could have punished him, but he was respecting him. Because, like... I think he was respecting crouch cancel right here because if Mango had come in with an aerial, all Leffen had to do, or not, I'm sorry, not crouch cancel, ASDI down. If if uh, Leffen had ASDI down and Mango had come in with anything that wasn't a grab, then I'm pretty sure he just would have like not been able to uh, get really punished hard for anything here. Can but, he like, ASDI down during his uh, his up smash, smash. animation? Like yeah. during what during the animation you can <laughs> ASDI while the animation is yeah. still happening? Yeah. Oh uh-huh. fuck! That's okay. why that's why ASDI down is so broken because like you can throw shit out and then while simultaneously you're throwing shit out, you literally just hold down and buffer like you buffer like grabs or you buffer like attacks and stuff. And if you get hit by like a stray thing, that's why you keep seeing like a lot of um who is it like Zane? Zane will do a lot of aerials to force foxes to want to like. Or he'll do a lot of like late aerials, which forces foxes to want to start doing uh, rising nair to beat the late aerials out. And so what happens then, right, is he just starts going into dash dance, and then he he'll throw something out in the ASDI down to bait the rising nair. And then from that, he'll like ASDI down, grab it. Especially if it's rising, right? Then like you can literally just hold down and grab it. It doesn't matter if you're crash canceling or ASDIing down. You're usually going to get it. And so dog. <laughs> Okay, yeah. cool, 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 cool. Okay. It's it's actually broke. You have to space incredibly fucking well. It, it it turned like a stray hit that could potentially lead into a position advantage for Fox and Falco players. It turned that into like to like bad, like just just not worth taking the risk to set like to potentially get something off of a stray hit, right? And so shit. Okay, so can you tell um just before we move on as well, can you tell mm-hmm. so say Say if Mango had run in and done something and left and had ASDI down or right. ASDI buff or whatever the fuck, can you see that or is it just something that you can tell has happened because something like a move wasn't successful or can you see it? You can't really see it. It's something that is so like a lot of how neutral and played around this game now. They're played under the basis of can ASDI down or crouch cancel beat this just by itself, right? And I'm not even exaggerating. The, the meta has gotten pretty pretty fucking insane. Like, that's the reason why HBox is so fucking strong on platforms, is because he, once he gets to a platform, he can mix in wave dashing, and while he's wave dashing, he's holding down. That's ASDI down. 
So if they run up too late and try and punish him for going for a platform and he's already on it and he wave dashes and gets hit by something, he's getting a grab. Like, he's getting a grab on a platform. Damn, okay. Are it's you... insane. It is so fucking strong. So you can only see, like, the ASDI... But right, when, yeah. when, like, you can only see the counterplay. You can only see, like, what the move is... Mm-hmm. Like, what, what, how the other players failed and how the person ASDIing is, is capitalizing, I guess. Right. Okay. At, at this point, if we're playing against someone good... We need to be expecting them to be ASDIing down on pretty much everything. I will say. And I, yeah. Go on. Go ahead. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Okay. Yeah. So, like, unless it's very specific positions to where they're not primed for ASDI down, because with all of this, they either throw something out in ASDI down, right? Or they'll, like, stay in place and then, like, do something, right? Or they'll move and then hold down. They can't, like, they can't simultaneously do a whole bunch of shit while moving. They can't move and hold down unless they hold, like, unless they, what is it? I think there's a trick that they can do where they hold, like, A and C stick down, and then they can get ASDI down just out of dash dancing. But, like, when you do that, you're, you're like, I don't know. It's such a bad thing to do that. It's, it's kind of such a bad thing, so I won't really talk about that too much. But the reason why that's bad is because when you're holding down and down, or when you're holding down A and C stick down, you're limiting a lot of your neutral options uh-huh. and that's like that's just really not worth it so um yeah it's usually just not worth it so like the asdi down needs to be primed that's the thing is it has to be primed by doing some other kind of action so like you can whiff an aerial and then asdi as you're whiffing the aerial you prime by holding asdi down so like that's yeah anyway uh a- but AS- yes you can't really you can't really see like ASDI down happen at all until it happens, if that makes sense. Until a hit connects and then you see it, you can't know that they were going for it. So it's it's best to just assume that they're almost always going for it. Uh-huh. Unless like unless it's a very tight position in which they would have to preemptively set it up to to get it going. I see. And then there's no actual animation for it. You just notice that someone's right. move didn't fucking do the thing it was supposed to, I guess. Right. Normally is they're gonna get hit by a move. They're just gonna. It on, looks like they're there. gonna go down under crucial stand. What's up? Sorry, you you cut out for a second. What did you? What was that? Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I mean, what's all that's gonna happen is they're gonna they're gonna hit someone, and the person that they hit is literally just. It looks like they're gonna go right back into crouching, and then they're just gonna get, get like a, a grab or an attack or something like that. So like, as Fox and Falco, they like to ASDI down and shine like a lot, like a lot. So it's just supposed to look like something like crouch. And I guess is like, the only kind of place of that like grab. So there's a few things that are really, really good counterplays to it. Falco has a really, really nice answer for crouch cancel, and that's down air. Mm-hmm. So doing doing late down air on crouch cancel is really good. Grab against crouch cancel or a grab against crouch cancel and ASDI down is insanely good. Um, spacing stuff into it. So like Falco, Falco and Fox F tilt is really nice because let's say like Samus, right? Samus is just crouch canceling aggressively right in front of us, you know, mm-hmm. and just like trying to set stuff up. If Falco just like laser F tilts her. She gets pushed too far back or down smash to connect. So she literally loses out on situations like that. And kind of not versus Samus specifically, but in the same respect, Mark has that against a lot of the cast where he can literally just throw a late fair out. He can just do like really late tipper fair on people, and there's very little they can do against it sometimes. So like not so much against like some of the faster characters i'm pretty sure kjh has done a thing where he shows that you can you can uh crash cancel tipper and still get a punish off of stuff but yeah. like even then if people are going to show you that they want to do that marth can just jump in and not do the aerial and just empty land grab <laughs> like it just kind of fucks that whole thing up so yeah i mean there's a lot of counterplay for it i'm sorry not a lot there's a little counterplay for it but yeah <clears throat> it's it's overall something that absolutely needs to be respected and so okay okay this nair is really 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 fun so oh, what in the fuck All right. so this this nair is good because if falco tries jumping at all which i think he gets hit out of his jump squat here yeah i think he might yeah he got hit out of his out of his jump squat so Mango was trying to jump to set something up, probably an attack of his own, but he gets caught prematurely by this Nair. This rising Nair 
can prevent Falco from being able to jump sometimes. If Falco tries to jump to shoot a laser, laser doesn't come out for 14 or 15 frames. Mm -hmm. And if he tries to jump and throw an aerial out, then it's also kind of difficult for him because he has to go through four frames of jump squat. So, like, if if Fox does this right, he can throw this narrow and, like, literally beat Falco for trying to throw that out. So, like, the way that Falco deals with that is by moving away and back airing, like I said, or shielding. This position, he couldn't have moved away. He had to have shielded mm -hmm. or, like, buffer rolled immediately. He, he could not have not gotten this hit connected by him unless he, like, buffer rolled immediately or something like I that. See. So. But yeah, this nair is incredibly strong from, like, a very similar position. So, like... Let's watch it again real fast. So he wave dashes in and tries jabbing. And Mango, I think, expects Leffen to back off here. So Mango backs away and then tries to come back and with some free game stage. But I think Leffen just wanted to get aggressive here and throw the nair out. So. Oh, this is the one that I was talking about. Sorry. I got that mixed up. This is the name that I want to talk about. Right here. This is Fox Fox's threat range, right? Even though he's like facing they're both facing away from each other, this is like pretty much where Fox wants to be. Because if Fox does just immediate rising short hop nair into Falco here, Falco can't like if if, if Falco jumps to down air, his head is still exposed, so he can still get hit by Nair, right? Okay. And if he tries if Falco tries to jump and shoot a laser frames so if if fox short hop nair is in here like he does there's very very little to do so he tries to go for a laser here and he still he gets for it right yeah even if he tried to jump for a downer i don't think that would have i don't think that would have worked that way dash in was really greedy bluffing. that was insanely greedy well, never mind. He got that. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. He got the hit confirm on the nair, so I think he expected it to connect. Yeah. Okay, that's why he went for the wave dash. He wanted to try and follow up on the tech chase. Mm -hmm. So he ex he expected the uh, he expected the nair and the shine to connect because he he hit confirm he hit confirm with the nair and then he tried hit, confirm, but it was like just a little too late. How soon was it too late? By? What do you mean by a uh, hit confirm? Oh, wow. Well. So, hit confirm is actually a Street Fighter term, or like a fighting game term. Uh -huh. And that's where, so like, <clears throat> let me, oh my god, that went, that went way too fast. Let me put it back in slow-mo, actually. Also, I didn't know when you wanted to stop doing this, by the way. I, I'm down to do this for whenever you want, until you want to stop. Uh, we'll, we'll do it for another 25 minutes, and then okay. and then I'll put this into my own little video, and I'll probably watch it until next time we uh, do it. Sure. So, yeah. Um, Mango tries throwing like a feint out here. He tries like, or yeah, a bait, sorry. He tries dashing into Fox to make Fox back off. And then he dashes away, I think. Yeah, and I guess Leffen either called that or expected him to try and just set something up immediately and do this. So the hit confirm is right here. So <clears throat> hit connects. So hit connects and then frame. So everyone's reaction, like, Average reaction time is 15 to 16 frames, just like as a staple. And then I think there are, um, there's a few different types of reactions, but I think trained reactions, you can actually get a little tighter than that even. So uh -huh. I think trained reactions, you can probably get like 12. I don't think you can get any lower than that, but probably around 12, like a, maybe 11 to 12 frames, I think. Uh -huh. If you practice the situation. So like, especially in a position like this, we don't have to worry about them retaliating. All we have to react to is like one or two different things. So this is frame one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So then laugh and fast falls and then he L cancels and he realizes that after all of that, like he's confirmed it and Falco's still in the air here. So he thinks he's gonna be able to get the shine. This is actually all off by one frame. Damn. So, like, watch this. So he lands, and he goes for shine. Oh, shit, I got it wrong. What the fuck? Which one am I looking at? Oh, this is the different... Never mind, whatever. This is... Anyway, this still explains the, the hit confirm thing that I was trying to talk about. So, like, literally, it's the hit connecting, and then you go into something. That's all it is. So it just is means doing it within that time. 
Right. You react to the hit, and then you base what you do next off of that, essentially. Huh. Okay, cool. So basically, Mango shouldn't have been able to react because... Because of that, that timing. Well, no, 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 no. Not necessarily. I mean, like, kind of, yeah. So, like, here, he throws that out, and then he throws... Because of the position and the decision-making that Mango chose, the game unreact. Oh, right, can, but my, my point was the, the hit confirm thing, just real fast again. So, the hit confirm is literally, you connect with the hit, and then however many frames after you connect with it, you realize that the hit connected, and then you change depending on that. Because if we had hit, and he shielded here instead, we would want to go for something immediate. We would want to go shine into grab, right? Right. Because it's on shield, or shine into another shine, like double shine, right? To beat the sh uh, shine out of the shield. But instead, we realize that we, we connected our hit, and we go into shine, and then wave dash, or jump. I guess he might have missed the wave dash. If he had wave dash right after, he probably would have been able to set up positional advantage again. And he would have gotten center stage for free, and Falco would have been cornered. I see. So. Okay, the up fill. Yep. Yeah, that's the one that I was talking about. That was literally one frame. Probably this so, let's say from however many, so, okay, so frame 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, so they're both actionable right here, and this is so funny, both shield and and shine i believe come out frame one though shield has some specifics shield starts off small and then gets big right yeah so you can still get shield poked out of it and stuff like that sometimes um i believe so yeah he crouches and they both do their frame one thing at the same time uh, i see yeah so like that's why um Leffen went for wave dash here is because he hit confirm on this and this was there was absolutely no way ever for him to be able to know that this would have gone into a uh, that he would have gone into shield other than just like having really good awareness and I think he might have been able to do the shine a little bit earlier but anyway that's regardless of the point that's why he did the wave dash so anyway 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 okay so there's shine see ya so now he's starting to get now he's starting to get some combos and stuff on. So um let's see how he gets this. Okay. So this is actually So Mango rolls away and he expects Leffen to not want to stay in place and he expects him to not want to roll either. So I think Mango shoots a laser to stick him in place and then he expects him to try and go for the platform and wave land onto it. So Mango preemptively jumps to the platform to shine and beat beat left and going for the platform there. Mm -hmm. That's only if you're going from analog to digital press on the trigger arc. Uh, if he doesn't have the spring in his trigger, the full shield is out before the animation shows. Oh, really? There's a difference between... Oh, okay. There's a difference between analog and digital press on... Oh, okay, okay. Well, I mean, I know that there is, but I didn't know that there was a difference for how the shield itself comes up. That's interesting. I'm going to make a note of that real fast. The fuck is ADT? <laughs> Uh, so you could be affected by ADT. I don't know. Fucking Zoomer Melee has taken over. I'm just an old guy trying to fucking <laughs> figure anagram or uh, anagrams. No, that's not it. That's a fucking. Uh, oh my god, what are those called? Abbreviations. Analog digital. Transition. Analog digital transition. Interesting. Okay. Um. Yeah, because I, I, I said that, and then, like, I saw that shield come up, and I was like, man, that shield looks fucking big as fuck. <laughs> like, that was, sounds weird. Um, uh, there's an analog shield come up, and... Shield come up, okay. Uh, trigger, trick. Okay, sick, cool. That's all, that's all I wanted to write down. All right. Uh, did you have any questions or anything specific that we want? I know I'm going over a lot of shit and like more often than not it's like neutral but we're about to get into like okay so he 
Let's see. How does he even get this hit, though? Let's see. So he puts him in the corner. He goes to the platform. Oh, I see. He So he... So Leffen tries jumping up to the platform and starting pressure on Mango. And Mango just wave lands off of it and attacks him at the same time. So then... That means Leffen's jumping up to him, so he's moving up, right? And he gets hit by back air here. So then he just falls into shine. Same thing. That probably could have been hit confirmed, too. Um, so right after landing that aerial into shine, right? Um, Falco, or I'm sorry, Fox, or whatever, like Fast Faller, is stuck in stun for quite a long time. So there's a lot of stuff for people to set stuff. Or there's a lot of time for Falco to set up combo stuff here. So then he down airs into shine again. And the game doesn't have, like, um, the game doesn't have a state to put people in when they get hit below a certain percent into the stage. But none of that matters if we hit the, the space animal player high enough with down air, because they're not going to be able to land before we can do something, if that makes sense. So, like, he gets stuck, and he kind of goes into a weird tumble animation where I think that's if you hit dare early, like rising dare like this, then what happens is you can kind of go into that animation. Yeah, you get stuck into the animation until you get into the ground, until after you get into the ground. But if you get hit early with it, then what happens is instead of getting spiked into the stage, if you're at low percent, you just land into the stage with zero lag. Because huh. the, game doesn't have a, the game doesn't have a specific state for that, so instead of sending you into a specific like tumble animation or different state, it just sends you into neutral stand. So you can just like do literally whatever. What the fuck? So okay. yeah, so like hitting <clears throat> hitting either higher up with the aerial or hitting late can be really really helpful. That was an insane tech on Leffen's part. Okay. Mm. Almost really nice shorten. Almost got him out of it. So, okay. Yep. And again, like all this is so funny because people have gotten really, really good about this. Is actually like this position, just in general, with any character, is so fucking important, and people still don't understand how it's played very well. So, like, when somebody has invincibility, and somebody else doesn't. The person who doesn't, their goal is to just make them waste their invincibility. Normal. That's how most of the general public and general people that play the game think, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, oh, just run away from him or do stuff to get away from him, right? Mm -hmm. When that is true, there are better ways of doing it. Instead of just doing that, why don't we make them use their invincibility and make them vulnerable in specific positions on the stage so that we can punish them right after so watch all this. So Leffen jumps the top platform, right? Mango jumps and shirts laser off. He shields just in case if laser like throws something out. So now like he's gone through more than half of his invincibility, right? And he he full hops, double jumps to try and attack him, jumping off or running off the side part. But instead, Leffen just stays reactive and stays up on on top platform, and then short hops and then double jumps once he realizes that that Mango's coming up. Mango loses his invincibility once he lands. Right? Mm -hmm. Leffen just took this man on a fucking trip. And now he's about to get... Well, maybe not. He fucks up the punish, but whatever. He could have gotten a very strong punish from that. Yeah. How long so. does um, Invincibility last? I actually don't know. I'm actually not 100% sure. It's a, it's a, I've been playing the game for so long that I... I it's just a feel thing now for me. Like, So, yeah. Uh, Mango now does the same thing, right? So... Falco doing this is really, really fun, too, because you can, like... So what he does is he starts moving away from him, and he starts making Leffen think that he's going to continue running towards the stage, right? So he moves away to make him think that, and then he moves back into him. So he, he moves away, and then he moves back into him, and then he flops, right? Mm -hmm. So now Leffen's like, well, shit, he's probably going to go for, like, platforms. He's probably going to go for side platform or top platform. Chances of him going for top platform are actually pretty high. So Leffen goes ahead and tries to go for that to cover it instead. But Mango just moves over this direction instead. And yeah, now, like, technically Mango isn't in that great of a... But he made him waste all of his... I see. Right. And that's, like, still a pretty major goal. I think there were better ways for Mango to, to do that, maybe. 
Uh, maybe not with the way that Leffen react. Actually, I think, I think that might have changed it. I think Leffen reacted in a in an interesting way that maybe allowed him to not get punished by something direct and only like uh, a stray hit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and then like I said, this is Mango trying to be proactive thinking Leffen's going to full hop, so he just, like, full hops and then throws out these lasers. So, Leffen just full hops and is waiting and watching Mango. So, he has no reason to double jump into a laser need to, right? So, he just full hops, then repositions himself, and then gets, like, a really free back air out on shield, but Mango gets hit by it anyway. So, mm, Leffen messed up his punish there. Okay. Yep, that's what I was talking about, like, earlier from Falco starting to worry about dropping down. If Falco starts having to drop down like this, then uh, another space animal could just throw another aerial out in that path to obstruct it. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah, full hopping is really crazy against Falco. Full hopping is, like, actually a problem, like, a pretty big problem for Falco to deal with. Yeah. Did, so, do they try and, like, uh, full hop to kind of deal with they it? Can full hop, they can full hop to compensate for it. They can full hop and laser just to, like, make them think that they can't get it anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Or that it won't be guaranteed full hopping. There's ways of, like, positioning yourself to punish their landing on reaction. There's there's a lot of different stuff Falco can do. But it's like, Falco has to be in the right position. So, like, Fox's full hop and Fox in general is so good that sometimes Fox can just full hop and people just can't do shit. And it's the same for, like, Falco. And it's the same for, like, other really, really good players, right? or other really good characters. Like, Mark can do the same. Falcon can sometimes do the same. Like, sometimes characters can just do stuff, and those options are so strong that we just don't really need to challenge it or don't really need to risk challenging it, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to punish something when we know that we can't get the punish, we just keep playing neutral until we get the positioning right, and then we go for it, right? Okay. So, whoops. Okay. okay. Oof. Oh, that's so sad. Womp womp. Rest in pepperoni, weapon. Rip, rip. Okay. I thought it was going to be a shot out of shield. Yep, there's the up tilt that I was talking about. And then there's full hop back here. Like, this shit is so crazy. Mm. Oh, I think he messed up Shine Out of Shield. I think Leffen messed up Shine Out of Shield. Yeah. Yeah, then Mango trying to cover top platform. Now Leffen has to, has to kind of wait and then reposition. That was a really... Interesting. He might have been able to get a laser off of that, but anyway. Uh, what do you say? Who's giving up good position to press on a better position down there? You're absolutely That is 100% true. Yeah. If, if you get the positioning right to set that up, then you are in range to get hit by another primary tool from Fox. That is that is one hundred percent correct. Yeah. Wait, how did he set that up smash up? What what happened here? I looked away for a second. Oh, he just up throw. Alright, never mind. Nothing to see here. Uh do you have any questions about anything you covered again or No, everything everything mostly makes sense here. Okay, cool. Oh shit! Ah uh, shit. Thank you, PT. Appreciate you, baby. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Mwah. Done. Okay. Yeah, he just needs to refresh invincibility. Yeah, and then just get another free back here. Okay. So yeah, um, Mango got a lot more punishes this time. And I think the punishes that he got were mostly from... Um, 
there were a few mess ups on Leffen's part that really cost him. Mm-hmm. And then I think there were some times where Leffen would hit confirm. There was one time where Leffen hit confirm something and then got punished because of it, because of what we talked about earlier. Yeah. So, um, Mango was also really proactive about covering forms and covering endings better that game. So, and he did also get kind of lucky on the right side. He he snagged Leffen out of a out of a really weird position and got a free down air off of it, which really really helped out. And I think he probably carried momentum for that. Mm-hmm. Kicks. What's up? No, I'm just I just said kicks. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. All uh, right, let's see. Um, it's super hard to practice that too because you may be able to get a good punish at that moment. A lot of people give into that urge to take the punish they have in front of them. You're supposed to win half a second or even two seconds later to get a really good punish or even a kill. Yeah. <laughs> it depends. It, it 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 highly depends on the situation too, though, Esquire. Sometimes it's not really that easy. Sometimes getting a stray hit is actually better than getting a clean hit. And I know that sounds really, really strange, but sometimes you can get a stray hit and you just knock them off stage and just edge guard them from there. And like, you know, then it really doesn't matter too, too much. Whatever they do, you can just like, if the positioning is right, then you should be able to kill them sometimes. But it's, it's, I get what you mean. I definitely understand what you mean. And that isn't too, like, yeah, slightly altering the approach timing or the, or the timing for the primary tool that you use is really fucking important. Wait, can you rewind back to the beginning of uh, that then? Yeah. Okay. So, so I, he dealt with uh, his full hop just with like a near, right? Like just because he knew it was coming. Mm, let's see this again. Um, I don't really brief? think that near would have helped out a lot. I mean, well, I, it, it was fine here. Um, I think Leffen was probably still too high to. Uh, to throw drill out and it probably wouldn't have been a really big risk to mango if the drill came out so i think this was like pretty good for him i think this this near covered like a few different things actually so i don't think it was just well let's see let me go back and, and watch it again just real fast to make double triple sure okay While it did cover a few different things, I think I think the reason Mango used it here, the way that you talked about, I think that's cool. So, yeah, I think that's, I think that was correct. Yeah, that looks right. Uh, Falco can also dash under and then short hop and back air this direction too. If if Fox keeps trying to like overshoot, you know, to like or like undershoot to get like nares and stuff. Mm-hmm. Then Falco, or I'm sorry, overshoot, overshoot to catch like the nair, and then throw back around themselves. Falco can just short dash through them, and then short hop and throw back around this direction, and then he's just like set up really well. Okay, so if if Falco can um, anticipate like a full hop, though he can deal with it. Okay, it's just if it's not anticipated, and also right. how is that yeah. like are empty like full hops as strong as? Ones where they come down with, like, drill or narrow or whatever. So the reason why we're seeing so much respect on both both sides, the reason why we're seeing so much respect for Mango against Leffen is because Leffen can just empty hop and reposition himself into a better, like, positional advantage on stage. Mm-hmm. Or he could come off with an attack. Or he could stay on platform. We don't know. We have to respect those options, though, right? We have to respect the potential options, because if we don't, we can get beat really, really hard by them. So, um, yeah, like, you really, really, really have to make sure you respect that stuff. You, the, 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 okay, so there's, like, there's a few different ways of beating full. So there's proactively, you can beat it proactively, right? And that's where you cut Fox off as he moves, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's, because, again, in this game and most other fighting games, two primary types of, like, um, actions, and that's proactive or reactive, Right, uh-huh. and you can beat this by either being proactive, or you can beat it by looking or like feigning aggression to set up positional advantage for when he full hops. Mm-hmm. Right, so that when he does full hop, if he does full hop in on us, we can react with a punish. And what happens there is if Fox commits to something, 
or if Fox, um, yeah, Fox commits to something, he just gets hit. If Fox doesn't commit to something, he can react and double jump away, but we still don't get punished, right? Mm -hmm. If he's forced to double jump to get away from, like, whatever we're doing to beat the full hop, um, then, yeah, he has to just back off, which is great for us, right? Like, we really, like, we really don't care. If he if he has to move away or give up stage base or, like, go to a side platform, going to a side platform's, like, not that difficult to deal with. It's The issue is, like, when Falco's at, like, near the edges and Fox has the the top platform. That's when shit starts getting kind of bad. Okay, cool. Thank you. And so, mm -hmm. um, we haven't really talked about Falco Punish Game, so I'm just going to talk about that very briefly. Normally, what it is, is it's going to shine or a downer into oh, shine, or you, just to shine by itself. You cut it's off up. for a second. Can you say it again? Yeah, sure. So the way for Falco to start his combo tree against Fox or other uh, fast followers is by landing an aerial into shine. And then from there, he hit, he hit confirms with the aerial, right? And then he hit confirms the aerial with shine. And then he wave dashes forward on shine and then continues the combo with the short hop into um, down air, right? Mm -hmm. And then he gets another. He gets, I believe, three of those. Um, if he doesn't get three, then he gets two. So from there, the goal is to lead them toward platforms, right? After, like, a certain percent. We want to start leading them to platforms to get harder punishes. Because, and I think this is a really, really cool um, video, actually, that I really like. Watch, just watch this combo pathing, just real fast. Look at how insane this combo pathing is. We'll just watch this in regular speed real fast. Okay. Like, not the whole match, obviously, but just, like, we'll watch, like, two of the combos. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he buffer rolled that time when, when PP tried uh, setting a positional advantage, so he might be looking for a roll again. He grab. Okay, misses the combo. I think the first stock he doesn't do it, so it might be like... Yeah. So, let's see. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, so the reason why this is so good is he's PP preyed off of a habit that a lot of people have, and that's that they try and jump to get out of shit, to get away from people. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of abuses this against Ryan Ford really well. So, like, here's the shit that I was talking about. Watch this. Watch how fucking broken this is. So, Fox's invincibility he comes on a side platform. PP's on the opposite side of the stage. Fox tries to full hop, or short hop off the platform into Nair, into PP. And PP still just stays away from him. After Ryan Ford gets close, PP full hops to get to gain more like distance from them, mm -hmm. which forces Ryan Ford to try and full hop to punish him. And then he double jumps to do this. PP lands and is just reacting from this point. He's literally just waiting and looking, right? Mm -hmm. And like he dashes, he might dash, but his full, full intent is like he dashes and is looking constantly at his opponent. Realize that they double jumped and are trying to go, right? And then he full hops and shines him on reaction, right? This is exactly what I was talking about. This is the second that Ryan Ford loses his invincibility, he gets shined out of his double jump onto top platform. This situation fucking sucks. Mm -hmm. So shine again, down air, shine again. Then he does Nair, or I'm sorry, Fair. He does Fair, and then he does Slide Off with Fair. And then gets above him. Ryan Ford is panicking right now. He wants to get over Falco so that he doesn't get down aired, and he doesn't want to grab ledge here, right? Mm -hmm. So all PP does is just double jump down air and just covers that, just in case he does. Even if he doesn't and he goes for ledge, PP can down air here and then just drift back to side platform and he's safe. Damn. So, watch watch this again, right? This just happened where he wasted his invincibility and got zero, right? Uh, let's play it in, uh, let's play it in slower speed. Let's play it in, like, really slow speed to get this next stock. Actually, let's not play it that slow. That's, like, really, really slow. That's, like, really, really slow. Okay, so he does the same thing, right? He sets the same thing up, right? But look how, like, this is how crazy top players can be sometimes. So PP, last time this happened, PP jumped straight up, which forced Ryan Ford to try and cover right here, thinking PP was going for top platform. Then he throws jab out like he did last time. PP stays away. Instead of jumping in place, he jumps towards top platform now, and he gets onto it and then just jumps back off. 
Now, Ryan Ford, he jumps onto the side platform, throws a laser out in case uh, Ryan Ford tries to get aggressive horizontally, and he doesn't. He goes for top, or he goes for side platform instead. Mm -hmm. And then he gets shined for going to that side platform. And then shine again. And then down throw. Yep. Damn, he's fucking shit. He's just all over him, and there's like very little he can do. He got a little lucky with that, uh, with that nair. And that was actually just a true combo, but it was set up in the same way, right? Because like, he, um, Ryan Ford's doing survival di here because he's afraid of getting down aired and getting sent off stage, probably, right? Mm -hmm. Or like, um, back aired potentially, like reverse sweet spot back aired. So instead of that, maybe just short hops off, hits him with the first hit. He DIs in on it, and then that sets up for downer. Nice. Yeah. And then the, the just watch one last, this one last stock. Okay, good shot out of shield. So look at how PP punished um, this real fast. So he waited until Ryan Ford jumped, and then he throws a laser out in his path. So now Ryan Ford gets hit. He can't double jump again. It's the fall. Mm -hmm. That time that he falls, PP can start dashing forward and setting up an aerial. This is positional advantage. This is an example of positional advantage. Mm -hmm. So PP jumps in. He's still not even landed yet. He can't do anything. He Now he lands. And then he immediately gets shield up, right? Then PP already has enough time to set, like, to set all this up, but he gets shield poked by it anyway. <clears throat> Okay. And then he sets this up with uh, down. Oh, he does down air because he. I see, I see. He does down air because he wants to force attack and then get a tech follow up after that. Because if he doesn't do anything and he gets hit by down air, he just gets hit by another, like, he just gets hit by another. So then he up throws and then he sets the whole thing up again with short hop off and then sour spot nair this time into down air. You guys just fucked by the same shit though, all four stocks. More all four stocks, but they were they. It was the same. It was similar combos. Sometimes it was a true combo, and sometimes it was a setup. So I think it was only a, a true. I think it was only actually just a setup in a read once. I think all the other times, it was actually just a true combo. Yeah. Huh. Fuck. <laughs> so that's like combo pathing, and why combo pathing is like so fucking important. So, and like learning how to set those positions up too is really, really important. Mm -hmm. Even, I don't know, even by like today's standards, some of that play was actually pretty crazy. So, like, maybe PB was actually just a crazy, crazy fucking player. <laughs> so, when you say, um, like combo pathing, like, does that just, just mean comboing or is that like. So, combo pathing is, I, it's kind of a term, I guess that I've come up with or stolen from other people, but like the, what is it? The actual, um, I don't know where the actual term came from or if I just like started, I'm not really sure, but the, the, the only, it's been known for like a really, the only thing that I'm saying with that is you hit someone and you let the hit stun like play out a little bit. And while the hit stun's playing out, you plan how you want the combo to go, right? Right. So that's why it looks like PP is hitting like Ryan Ford almost like in in the last few frames of the stun that he gets off of the hits. I see. And then you just go from there. And what's gonna eventually right? So like let's take let's take this for example. Let's just say and this is how like a lot of this shit goes too with like higher level players, right? Let's just say for example, I think it was this stock, right? So yeah. So you get shine, shine again. And then down throw, dare shine, dare shine, back air. Okay, yeah. So like for example, let's say um, Ryan Ford, let's say this time he's ready for it. He's ready for the weak hit, so he wants the DI out. If he's holding out and PP just like... Um, yeah, if he can just dash jumps off here and down airs, Ryan Ford's holding out. He's going to go straight down. He's going to go diagonal down right like that, mm -hmm. right? 
and he's not going to be able to survive. And that's where, like, a lot of the combo stuff starts coming from. Because even, like, this is why the combo mix-ups are all really, really important, too. These A lot of these are, like, DI-dependent. I see. So, so yeah. it's, like, it's planning, essentially. You're just pre preparing. Yeah, planning. yeah, it's just planning. Because, like, worst-case scenario, like, let's... Like, you want to, like, prioritize certain things differently. So, obviously, you're not going to prioritize the dare first, right? You're going to prioritize, like, the weak hit first. Because even if we weak hit and they and they don't do this, we can react to it. If they DI like this, we can react with down air. If they don't and they go really far out, we could have ledge can or I'm sorry, PP could have ledge canceled into short hop air into double jump laser laser right to make him go lower and lower further off stage mm -hmm. and to potentially cut jumps out of him right but if we go for down air and they di into us then like we or i'm sorry yeah we we down air and then we land on platform as they tech onto it which is like not that great it's it just makes our timing and reaction like need to be so much faster to punish or to capitalize on that Mm -hmm. Which is just like not what we want. Um, I don't know if you watch anime at all. Do you watch anime at all? A little bit, yeah. A little bit. Okay. There's a show that's pretty cool and actually like goes into a lot of um, uh, what is it? Like theory crafting and that kind of stuff and explains things a little bit more than like most things do. And it's a uh, anime show called Haikyuu. Okay. It's a volleyball anime. Um, there's something in it. I don't want to say any spoilers for it. But I'm just going to talk about a example of something that was in the show, mm -hmm. um, which is take it easy is kind of what they say in certain positions. And all take it easy means is basically try and set stuff up so that it's just like literally as simple as possible. Just like keep it simple is essentially what I say mm -hmm. is keep it simple, stupid. And that's like a really, really old saying. But you don't have to get like really really crazy pressure and all this other stuff if you can just like shine grab right so like why not just get really good at shine grabbing and then mix between those things because now it's a 50 50 based off of our opponent right mm -hmm. that's keeping it really simple on our part while making it really really difficult for our opponent to do stuff still too so if we can like and the reason why all of this is so important right is because the more we can keep things simple and play like this and like flow chart out our punishes this way the longer we're allowed to play at our peaks. Okay. So, because we're not using a lot of mental effort trying to go through this because of how easy and simple we're making, right? We're not burning, like, all that mental energy trying to make this combo happen, right? We're, we're literally just going through the flow of the motion. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, like I said again, that, that's going to change a lot of different stuff. If we, if we zero to death people, if, if we hit them really, really hard, that's going to change how the neutral interactions happen. The next time that position comes up right mm -hmm. which is exactly what pp played off because if you remember on the first or on the uh, second stock he full hopped here right but on the third stock he he dashed full hopped in towards the top platform and that really fucked ryan ford up because mm -hmm. ryan ford was really ryan ford is actually a pretty good player and he was paying attention to pp and pp literally just ran circles around him because of that because of how close ryan ford was paying attention to pp pp just kind of made it work against him I see. <clears throat> and Ryan Ford didn't, like, understand that he was being preyed on that. And he either kept trying to follow up. I think, I think Ryan Ford's, like, mental game probably was, shit, I'm behind, I need to make something happen. Shit, I'm really behind, just take a stock. Shit, don't get four stocked. It's probably something along those lines. Yeah. Unfortunately. But, like, when you get, when you start getting beat this bad, it's, it can be really rough sometimes to, like, try and figure out what the fuck's going on. Yeah. But, anyway. Anyway, that was a really long rant. Sorry. Dad, no, um, you're fine. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, did you have any other questions? I, I don't know how early ago you said that you wanted to end this. I don't know if it's within that time or not yet. Um, yeah, no, that's, yeah, we can call time now. Time now is fine. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's quite a lot of information for today. Right, um, right. And this is, yeah, you're still going to be able to, like, go back and, and listen to this, and it's probably still going to help out for quite a while. Yeah. This shit is so. actually exactly two hours. Dead ass. <laughs> so, Dead ass. Dead ass. So. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Perfect okay. timing. Okay. Well, yeah, awesome. fuck. Well, I'm going to have to watch that back over. I'm going to put it on YouTube, too, so I can just um, rewatch yeah, it and fine. stuff. Um cut that here